Number 25, determine the cell reaction and standard cell potential at 25 degrees Celsius for a cell made from an anode half cell containing a cadmium electrode and one molar cadmium nitrate and an anode half cell consisting of an aluminum electrode in one molar aluminum nitrate solution. And then is the reaction spontaneous at standard conditions? Okay. So looks like we need to do three things here. We need to find the cell reaction, AKA write a balance equation. We need to find a standard cell potential. And anytime that they're talking about a standard cell potential, we're looking for a E cell. So standard cell potential, E cell, tomato, tomato. This little notch up here just means that it's standard. So it's been saying it all over here, right? Standard, standard conditions. So we're looking for that E notch cell. And the third thing that we have to find out is, is this reaction spontaneous? Now, the easiest thing to do is, well, first, you know, first actually look at the problem, right? What information did they give us? Now, they actually gave us some hints. They already told us that we had a anode half cell containing cadmium electrode. So they did tell us the, the metal that we're using. Electrode is just a fancy way for saying that I have cadmium solid going on here. And, uh-oh, how is this possible? We have an anode half cell and an anode half cell. Um, what I'm going to say is maybe let's, let's assume that this first one is the cathode. So I'm going to cross out anode and I'm gonna put cathode because one has to be the cathode and the other one has to be the anode. You can never have two anodes or two cathodes. So we're gonna play it out like this is the cathode and that's the cadmium. And then they told us that the anode has the aluminum electrode. And that just means that we have aluminum solid. Now they did tell us some other things. We have cal cadmium nitrate, we got aluminum nitrate, but does that even matter in this question? Well, we'll figure it out. If we want to solve for a standard cell potential, it's a really easy formula to find out. It's this one right here. It's just the cell potential, E cell, is equal to the cell potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. You could always just think of it as cathode minus an anode, cathode minus anode. Now, if they didn't tell us what was the cathode and what was the anode, the easy way is to look at the charges to see which one is becoming more positive or more negative. But since they told us already who was the cathode and the anode, I don't really need to do that. And that's why we have to change one of them, right? Because we can't have two cathodes, can't have two anodes. So I'm going to say that the cadmium was the cathode, C for cadmium, C for cathode. And... The anode was the aluminum, Al. So cadmium on the periodic table is Cd. Aluminum on the periodic table is Al. Okay, but now how am I going to find this cell potential? They didn't give me any voltage values, right? They didn't give me cell potential values. Well, that's why we had to go in the back of the textbook to find out which ones we were going to use. So that's what I did for you guys. I picked out the cadmium one and the aluminum one that we're gonna be using in this equation. So with this, all you have to do is just plug in these values. These cell potential values uh, make no difference how many you have in your balance equation, like if you had a two coefficient or a three, these values are going to be the only values that you use in your standard cell potential. So let's just find it out. E cell equals, and by the way, if you are using cathode minus anode, emphasis on the minus, you do not need to change these values. The negative does it basically for you because both of these are cathode half reactions. The electrons are on the left side. But if we use the negative, that negates basically the cathode, turns it into an anode. But basically, if you use the negative, you do not have to change the values in the back of the textbook. So let's keep going. The cathode value is negative 0 0.4030 minus the anode, which is the aluminum, which is the negative 1.662. And let's see what we get. 
E cell equals negative 0 0.4030 minus a negative 1.662. And I'm going to press enter. And there I go. I have 1.259, and that unit is volts. So one third of the problem we're already done. We found out the standard cell potential. Now the next step is to just quickly say whether this is a spontaneous reaction or not. And that comes from just knowing what sign you have on your E cell that you just found out. If your E cell is positive, that means you got a spontaneous reaction. If your E cell is negative, that means that your reaction is non-spontaneous. So since 1.259 is a positive value, we know that this reaction is spontaneous, meaning that it's just going to go by itself to completion without any help from outside sources. And I also want to point out to you that since this is the standard cell formula, and it was just cathode minus anode, no temperature was, was involved. That was extra information. No molarity was involved, right? That was extra information. So sometimes they will give you, you know, more than enough information, more than you actually need. So just, just don't, don't worry. Just trust the process, trust those formulas. Now let's find the balanced equation, aka the cell reaction. This is where we're going to be using our two half cells to combine them into making one balanced equation. So we already stated that the cathode was the CD and the cathode formulas are always when your electrons are on the left side. So this is the cathode. So I don't have to do anything with this equation. So I'm just going to rewrite it. CD2 plus, and that's aqueous if we needed a state, plus two electrons yield CD, and that's the electrode, that's the solid. Now, we said that the anode was aluminum, but on the back of the textbook, they give me the equation as the cathode, but we don't want it as the cathode. We want it as the anode. So what are we going to do to this equation to get those electrons on the product side? Yeah, we have to flip this equation. So anything that's on the uh, right-hand side is going to be on the left. Anything that's on the left-hand side is going to be on the right. So I'm going to start off with the aluminum solid. And I'm going to go to the Al3+, plus, that's aqueous, and the 3E-. minus. Now in order for me to put these two equations together, I need to make sure that those electrons are balanced, but they're not right now. But what's the, the next number by multiplying that, you know, goes with two and three? Yes, yeah, six. I could take the first equation and times it by three. And I could take the second equation and times it by uh, two. I almost said six. But with that, you could turn the electrons into six electrons. But you got to be fair. Whatever you times by the top, you got to times it by all three of them. And the same thing goes for the bottom ones. So I'm just going to work on the top. I'm going to times each coefficient by 3. So in this case, I get now 3C, 3D, 3CDs, 2 plus aqueous, plus the 6 electrons yield 3CD solid. And once I write that equation, I say bye-bye to the last one. And now I'm just going to do the same for this one. I have two Al solids yields two Al3 plus aqueous plus six electrons. Once I write that, I say bye-bye to this guy. Bye-bye now. <laughs> who, who, I, who is that? Bye-bye now. I have no idea. Sounds like a Looney Tune character. Could be. Elmer Fudge? Don't know. Anyway, we're going to add these two together. And we're going to say that, hey, now we have six electrons on both sides. They can get canceled because a balanced equation should never show any electrons. And now whatever is on the left side stays on the left side. Whatever is on the right side stays on the right side. So we got three 
CD2 plus aqueous plus 2AL solid yields 3CD solids plus 2AL3 pluses. And before I say anything further, I just want to also bring home the point that it does not matter if you have coefficients. Here, in the balanced equation, we actually have coefficients. But did that matter when we took the numbers from the back of the book? Absolutely not. So don't do that with your E-cells. And there we go. Box this answer off and call it a day. Okay, what do you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And just remember that this answer is relying on that the first one we changed was the cathode. Maybe go and try out uh, when you switch the second one to the cathode. What should happen? Maybe this would be a negative. I'm not sure. I am sure. Okay. But anyway, thank you for viewing the video. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please tell your classmates or friends about this channel. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists and that the that you know it spreads all over the world. And the YouTube universe has a good educational service when studying chem. We also have physics and math videos at the moment with more subjects coming your way. So just periodically look back. We love helping you guys out. My brother and I really do appreciate you all. And I hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.